The PS5 generation will be remembered for one thing, the leverless controller boom. But with so many companies coming out with their own takes on this hot new form factor, how do you know which one to get? Well, I'm Nihongo Gamer, and this, the Razer Kitsune, is probably the most highly anticipated PS5 controller this generation. In addition to the all-button layout with extra-large keycaps and low-profile optical key switches, it's also dramatically thinner and easier to carry around compared to a traditional arcade stick. But are the promises of wide availability and native PS5 compatibility enough to make it the perfect tournament companion? In a world of indie and boutique controller makers, Levelless is finally going mainstream because this is the Razer Kitsune. The Razer Kitsune is no ordinary controller. It's not even an ordinary leverless controller. The Kitsune is the officially licensed all-button controller that's been built from the ground up for the next generation of fighting games. Full disclaimer, Razer did send this controller to me free of charge for the purposes of this video. I don't have to say anything specific about it. I don't have to send it back and all opinions are my own. Now we've seen mod kits that turn licensed arcade sticks into button boxes, and we've even had an officially made conversion of the premium grade Evo Trophy, the Victrix Pro FS. But the Kitsune goes one step further. This is more than some arcade stick with the stick removed. This is a brand new design that considers every detail from opening the box to how responsive these optical key switches feel, and most importantly of all, the ergonomics. Thanks to years of groundwork laid by smaller, family-run businesses, the demand for fight pads that are designed specifically with this all-button layout in mind is higher than ever. There's just one small, tiny issue. They're completely impossible to buy. Okay, they're not actually impossible to buy, but joining a Discord full of meme posters just to figure out when your chosen indie maker is going to reopen for pre-orders despite the product already being out for two years, well, you can see why people are excited about a well-known company like Razer stepping into the arena. But does it live up to the hype? Well, Razer has an excellent track record when it comes to offering tournament-grade controllers. Just check the replays of any tournament of the past eight years and you'll see Razer arcade sticks like this Pantera being used at almost every single one. And with the Kitsune being a leverless controller, the design is so simple that pretty much all the work has gone into refining the minute details. Quiet buttons? Check. Lightweight construction? Check. RGB lighting? Rainbow mode! Check. The Kitsune has a slick design for sure, but none of that matters if it doesn't perform well in fighting games. While the case itself has a backpack-friendly footprint no bigger than a large iPad, which sits comfortably on your lap, and the top plate houses the main 12 buttons in the now common thumb jump layout that you'll find on most leverless controllers. This offers you mostly the same inputs that you'd get on a pad controller but with the crucial difference that you can press left, down, right or up individually, all at once, or any combination in between. Not only is this a massive win if you've always found arcade sticks a barrier to entry, but it's a paradigm shift for the genre. Because if you're coming from 3D action, platform games, or almost any other game in existence, you already use a button to jump. Fighting games still require you to press up on the D-pad or analog stick to jump, but all button layouts are bridging this gap between playstyles. The buttons are laid out comfortably enough, allowing you to jump with either your left or right thumb, and the vertical spread is actually a little bit wider than anything I've seen before. Presumably this is to fit the Vulix style action button layout which leads to a steeper angle in your arms and as a result a lower position for your thumb. Placing the jump button higher up would lead to more tension in your wrist, a bit like what you'd find when typing on a regular computer keyboard. Personally I prefer layouts where the L1 and L2 buttons actually come down a little lower but I'm aware that some people think that the Vulix layout is better. If you're new to lever this though I will just say that if you use your right thumb to jump then your hand is mostly locked in place so you won't have the same freedom of movement that you might have on a regular arcade stick. I didn't experience any pain while testing the Kitsune, so I think it's fair to say that this layout does work well, and certainly worth trying if other controllers have been causing you wrist pain. But when it comes to ergonomics, there's so much more to consider than just the button layout. If you've ever typed an essay or used a computer for long sessions at work, you'll know how easy it is to end up with painful, expensive wrist, arm, and back pain. That's where two key features of the Kitsune come into play. The first one is ultra slim design. At a height of just two centimeters, including the keycaps, you can let your hands rest or hover just over the buttons without causing any undue tension in your shoulders or awkward bending of the wrist. Thicker controllers aren't completely unusable, but to avoid excess muscle tension, you just end up extending your arms forward to get a better angle. This brings me to the second key feature, button placement. Compared to other leverless controllers, the Kitsune offers a little more room to rest your palms in between matches, but not so much that it pushes the buttons too far away from you. If you've ever had to work long hours with your arms outstretched, you already know how uncomfortable and painful that can be over time. The Kitsune offers you the flexibility to choose. 
keep your hands close for optimal posture and avoiding injury or stretch your arms out for those extended Street Fighter 6 online sessions where you end up slouching on the sofa, slowly passing out as your fingers continue to mash the buttons on their own. And how do those buttons feel? Well, I'm happy to report that these Razer low-profile optical key switches feel fast but maintain that springiness I loved on Razer's most recent arcade stick, the Pantera Evo. The buttons on the Kitsune are an absolute joy to press even before you plug them in because not only do they have a good bounce to them, they're incredibly quiet, they have a slight texture so they avoid getting sticky, and all while keeping that convex dome shape that you've come to know and love from the classic arcade machines. But that's not even the best part. From a distance, it may look like the Razer Kitsune has the same button layout as any leverless controller, but the details are where it really shines. On most leverless controllers, you've got 24mm buttons here along the top, and you've got one 30mm at the bottom. But on the Kitsune, since it uses its own rimless buttons, it can actually fit 30mm buttons here on top. And actually, this jump button is a whopping 33mm. Now, the Kitsune is not the first leverless controller to do this, but it is the first that's officially licensed and ready to work on PS5. And compared to the competition, the Kitsune works particularly well because you can use techniques like double tapping without accidentally hitting other buttons nearby. This is thanks to generous spacing between each button and also the rounded off dome shape of these Razer keycaps. Now before the Kitsune actually released, I was feeling quite a lot of anxiety about these buttons. When I heard that Razer would be opting for their own keycaps and key switches, I remembered one of my main gripes with the Pantera Evo. See, I really liked the feel of the Razer mechanical switches in that arcade stick, but they never sold them separately, so if any of them broke, you'd have to buy a whole new arcade stick, or replace the buttons with some other brand that wouldn't feel exactly the same. So you can understand why I was fearful for the launch of the Razer Kitsune, but lo and behold, these optical key switches are exactly the same shape as the ones made by Keychron. This means you can swap in any Keychron linear, clicky, or tactile bumps which that you like, and they're completely compatible with the Kitsune's original keycaps. But what if you damage or lose those keycaps? Well, there's nothing to worry about there either because I can happily confirm that the standard keycaps you could buy from Punk Workshop fit perfectly. And not only that, replacing buttons on the Kitsune can be done in a matter of seconds because there's no need to remove the top plate to gain access for maintenance. Replaceable keycaps and customizable key switches are great and all, but how does it feel to actually play? Well, the buttons are fast and fun to press, the layout is nice and comfortable, I don't feel pain after long sessions, and on top of it all, it's nice and quiet, which my neighbors certainly appreciate. If you come from MOBAs or FPS games, you'll feel right at home because even when placed on a desk, the Kitsune is super slim, so your wrists won't be raised at a weird angle. And if you're bringing it to local events or tournaments, you'll be happy to hear that the USB-C cable is not only removable, but it's housed in this hilariously over-the-top locking system that will prevent the controller from being accidentally disconnected in the heat of battle. Just stand by as the PS5 itself comes crashing to the ground instead. Totally worth it. Jokes aside, little mechanisms like this cable lock are what I've always loved about Razer and gear in general. Features like this pneumatic pump operated case or just the car like satisfying clunk of closing the hood are all aspects that elevate our devices from simple controllers to tools of the trade. Check out this video I made that goes into more detail on that. So the Kitsune looks great, feels great, and it's as easy to carry around as a tablet. Not only does it perform well in game, but it's sleek and engineered in a way that you'll want to bring it everywhere and use it to play everything. Well, if you have a PS5, then you're good to go, but if you're on PS4, well, that's where it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. See, Razer has clearly gone all in for the PS5 generation with the Kitsune. Thanks to an official partnership with Capcom, they can offer special edition models with gorgeous Street Fighter VI artwork pre-applied, and even the SOCD cleaner is set specifically to be tournament legal at Capcom Pro Tour events. There's just one major problem. It's not compatible with PS4. Why, why, why is the $300 box of key switches not compatible with the console that most people still use at home? When it comes to playing on console, I think it's fair to say that the fighting game community is divided. We all know that switching to PC would open up huge opportunities for sponsorships, but our biggest event of the year is co-owned by PlayStation, so there's no escape really from playing on PS5 for now. That's totally fine and all, but the FGC is more than just EVO. It's hundreds of local events in basements around the world and mini tournaments run by people who rarely make anything close to a profit. Do they all have the money to replace their collection of PS4s with PS5s? Not straight away, that's for sure. But fear not fighting gamers, because once again, Brook Gaming, the true hero of the FGC, might just have a solution. Frustrated by the exclusivity to PS5 on console, I sent a message to Brook Gaming to see whether they had a converter that would make the Razer Kitsune work on the PS4. And to my shock, they hadn't actually received their pre-ordered controller, so they couldn't even test it. They offered to send me one here in Japan, and 24 hours later, I had it 
here in my hands. It's called the Wingman XE2. You just plug it in between the Kitsune and your PS4, and as promised, it just works. I can confirm that it works on PS4, and there's no 8 minute timeout as far as I can tell. You'll have to set the Kitsune to PC mode, the share button will be remapped to a touchpad click, and the physical touchpad itself will no longer do anything. It's an extra $45 to factor into your purchasing decision, but if you've got your heart set on picking up the Kitsune and you need to use it on PS4, well, Brooke has you covered. So, if you have this converter, you'll be fine for compatibility, but it seems that Razer's ties with Capcom may have led to one more restriction that makes absolutely no sense at all, the inability to switch the SOCD cleaner to thumb jump priority. If you're new to fighting games and you only want to play Street Fighter 6, this may not affect you, but for legacy games and for players with years and years of muscle memory, the inability to switch back to thumb jump priority is a completely needless constraint. That being said, change is on the horizon. While PS5 exclusivity is unlikely to change, Razer tells me that in a future firmware update they will be adding SOCD profile switching. This hopefully means that you'll regain the ability to use thumb jump priority. Now it's still unclear whether this was excluded before just because of their ties to Capcom, but it does sound like they really just wanted to get this product out there as soon as possible. And I'm fine with that because the hardware is great and solid and things like SOCD profile switching can be added in firmware updates in the future. And there's one more thing that shows that even at this early stage, they're already listening to player feedback. Razer messaged me directly after they watched my initial unboxing video and they say that the upcoming firmware update will also allow L3 and R3 to be pressed even while the tournament lock switch is engaged. Honestly speaking, these buttons are a little too small to be useful as action buttons, but since official CPT rules allow for up to 11 action buttons for punches, kicks and in-game macros, you can be sure that players are going to try it. They also said that they're aware of the demand for a transparent top plate, replacement optical key switches and color keycaps, but whether those products become available remains to be seen. For now at least, the good news is that it's compatible with third-party switches and keycaps. Well, that's pretty much it for the Razer Kitsune. It hits all the important points like button feel and ergonomics and goes even further by offering a design and finesse that you won't find elsewhere. It'll never have issues with connectivity since it's officially licensed for PS5 and with the promise of better availability thanks to Razer's well-established distribution network, well, especially for new players, the Razer Kitsune looks like it might just be the definitive leverless controller to recommend this generation. But we're entering a golden age of controllers now, and if you want to see what else is out there, you won't want to miss out on this video right here. Anyway, that's all I've got time for. I've been Nihongo Gamer, and I'll see you real, real soon.